In this video, we're going to be overclocking the 1950X Threadripper processor. I'm going to show you guys how I got mine to 4.1 GHz base and 4.9 GHz turbo boost. Show you some of the benchmarks on that overclock and how well it runs and how it compares to my previous Ryzen 1800X. Alrighty guys, let's jump in. Welcome back. I appreciate you stopping in. If this happens to be your first time here, consider subscribing. Hey guys, I almost forgot to mention that overclocking your processor does void your warranty, so do it at your own risk. However, I'm willing to throw that out, and I'm excited and I'm ready to jump in. Let's do this. Alrighty, let's get started on the Threadripper overclocking. If you're new to overclocking and you want to be able to just play around, see what you can do and not worry about dialing in settings that could possibly damage your hardware, I highly recommend the AMD Ryzen Master software directly from AMD. It's pretty nice. You can play with things without worrying too much on damaging stuff. I believe its highest core voltage is 1.55 that you could take it to. And in order for me to get my Threadripper to 4.2, I had to go to 1.65. So this software is pretty nice. Take a look at it if you just want to play around. But let's jump into the BIOS and actually show you what I got dialed in for 4.1 gigahertz overclock. I suggest before you go playing around in settings in here, head on over here to the tools section. Go to your overclock profile, hit enter and save your current settings that you currently have going on so that way once you're if you ever need to you can go back to your default standard base settings and once you get the overclock that you want dialed in too, come in here and save your overclock setting so that way you could switch back and forth easily all right so come over here to the extreme tweaker tab because you're going to be tweaking this thing to bits <laughs> All right, you set your CPU core ratio to 4.1. Enable the overclocking enhancement. Leave that to auto. Your memory, whatever your memory runs at. I'm using the Intel version of the Trident at 3333. I have not tried the AMD version yet, but I have it here. That'll be another video. All right, core performance boost. You can leave that to auto. That's what's gonna give you your turbo boost. 4.9 but we need to have those other settings dialed in so that way the system's actually stable when it goes to 4.9 gigahertz with 32 threads SMT auto sped spectrum also auto um, that's for your power but you're going to be manually putting that in there so it don't really matter However, what you do want to do is disable the power saving mode. I was experimenting and I enabled that and that would cause the system to occasionally hang up. So switch your power saving mode to disabled, TPU to current settings, and scroll down a little bit farther down the core voltage under tweakers paradise you will see the CPU core voltage. You want to drop this little box down here to manual mode and then punch in 1.43125 and that's it you don't have to adjust any of these other ones it took a while playing around with this core voltage I actually, actually I was able to run it quite a while with just a little bit lower but it occasionally would hang up I bumped it up just a hair and uh, it's been rock solid for like a week now without any hangups, crashes, or blue screens. <clears throat> so once you get all that dialed in, just hit your F10 and save and reset. So boot into Windows, see if she runs, run your benchmarks, and uh, see what happens. There's another thing I'd like to add in here to this, is if you're having problems having this stable with these current settings, um, there are some settings that help me get the 4.2 stable enough for some benchmarks. Um, head on over here to the external DJI Plus power control, hit enter, and there's a couple settings in here. The CPU current capacity, 
go to 120. VRM spread spectrum disabled and the phase control to extreme. You might be able to change those and be able to get it to overclock better. However, it will increase quite a bit your thermal load on your cooling system. All right, let's boot her up to Windows and do some benchmarks and see how she turns out. Once you're booted up to Windows, make sure your power plan settings is in high performance. Let's go into your power settings, go over here to the additional power settings under related settings, and select the high performance power plan. Okay, once you booted up to Windows, um, I found out running Cinebench real quick will determine whether or not you're close to having a stable overclock. Uh, this thing will crash your system if it's not close. So click it a run and uh, see what happens. Hopefully if all is well, you don't crash and you'll come back with a pretty decent score, hopefully close to 3,500. And I came back with 3,509 on the Cinebench here on this one. Uh, task manager should show your base clock speed of 4.10 and if she's busy doing stuff she should turbo boost up to 4.89 4.9 there for a second um, speed let's take a look at the CPU Z settings here and you can see your settings in here I got the 4.1 multiplier applied it shows the 1.461 which is a little bit different than we put in because there's the offset so make sure you put in the offset I showed you in the BIOS and not this number here. Let's go over to bench real quick. This will also determine uh, if your system can handle the current settings. We'll throw in the Core i9 18 core as a comparison. Click on the stress, see what she comes up with. Surprisingly, I'm just able to beat the i9, just surpassing 10,000 on the benchmark. However, the Core i9 is at 2.6 GHz base clock, so I'm sure once you overclock the Core i9, it's going to slap Threadripper right in the face. <laughs> but still, definitely impressive for some numbers. Let's take a look at the temperatures. CPU is currently 18. Now, if you remember with the unboxing of the EK monoblock, I was really concerned with the cooling fins being the same size as the older AM3, AM4 that it wouldn't cool this thing sufficiently. Either the Threadripper runs pretty cool or this thing actually does decent. I really haven't had any cooling issues. In fact, I found it, the Threadripper to be easier to cool than my Ryzen 1800. Let's pull up CPU-Z, put a load on it so we can see the temperature here. It'd be interesting to see how this would compare with standard out-of-the-box water cooling and what it would be with even air cooling. She usually runs 40, no more than 44, um, and she'll bounce around. Also, it's kind of cool the Zenith Extreme motherboard has a temperature display right on the motherboard to show you the temperature of the processor. So she definitely running pretty cool for being overclocked so high, which uh, I'm pretty happy with that. The thermal wall seems to be 4.15. When I get up to 4.15, it's just, it gets out of this world. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at some other benchmarking numbers from performance test. I was really surprised with how this turned out with the Ryzen 1800. All righty, guys. Now I've done a lot of benchmarking so far and the Threadripper has tore up everything so far. A lot of times twice as fast or faster uh, than anything I've ever played with. However, uh, when I ran the performance test here, uh, the CPU benchmark, I ran it on my 1800 as well before I upgraded. And I got some interesting numbers. The Ryzen 7 1800X stock speed actually beat the overall score here of my Threadripper overclocked at the 4.1. As you can see, 16367 
compared to 16761. <clears throat> now let's take a look into this to see where, what section is causing the big difference. All right, uh, compression on the horizon is 27,000 and the thread ripper is 59. Um, huge difference there for the thread ripper. On the CPU single thread speed comes out to 2016 and the thread ripper is just a hair below the Ryzen at 1995 and it bunts me down just into the next category here. <laughs> so that is definitely interesting. Um, encryption. Uh, the Ryzen is more than twice as fast on the encryption part. I mean the Threadripper is almost twice as fast as the uh, Ryzen 1800 here. Let's see, the floating point math. The math coprocessor, this is interesting. Um, it's almost three times faster on the Ryzen 7 1800X. It's actually scored pretty awesome, the Ryzen did. They put it in the 99th percentile with a score of 16044. The Threadripper came back way low, 4,886. It puts it middle of the road here um, in the 51th percentile compared to the 99th percentile. So that's definitely interesting. Moving on to the other math test here. It is also, it looks like the Ryzen 1800 is twice as fast compared to the Threadripper. It has it in the 99th percentile at 43,000 compared to 28,000. Uh, the physics, the physics uh, on the Ryzen is not that bad. It's 932. The Threadripper does score better in the 99th percentile, maxing out the scale here at 1390. Oh, glad we're not the world minimal of zero. All right, prime numbers. <laughs> the Ryzen clocks in at 50, Threadripper 73. Not too much of a difference. The sorting speed. Um, both score really well. The Ryzen does come in a little bit better at 35,000 compared to 16,000. Extended instructions. Extended instruction sequences. Um, the Threadripper does better in that category also at 1,700 compared to 771. And that's it. That's all of them on the score here. So pretty interesting that uh, the Ryzen 1800 stomps on the Threadripper in a few of these sections. Um, didn't see that coming really. So pretty cool, huh? You guys should check out the Republican of Gamers Real Bench. Download the Real Bench software and uh, overclock your uh, thread rippers and see where we uh, match on here. That'd be kind of cool to hear. Um, if you check me out, if you go to the AMD on the CPU, go to scores from all users, I'm actually right here on the front page, 11 spots down, right here, right below Rocket. <laughs> What's interesting I find about this test is that it combines not only your processor, your RAM, but also your video cards score in this to give you that score. Um, I'm the only one on here with the 7, uh, GTX 1070. Um, everyone else has got Titans or the Vegas, you know, the high-end cards. I was really surprised that um, I was actually able to even make it a score this high with only uh, the 1070 video card. The only 1080 I even see is a Titan Edition 1080 right here. And it looks like it's on the uh, Crosshair, Crosshair Hero, so it's probably uh, the Ryzen processor. Alright guys, I'd like to hear how your benchmark numbers turn out. Let me know down in the comments below. So far, the overclock I decided to settle on is 4.1 base with uh, 4.9 turbo with all cores enabled. It seems to uh, run really fast at that speed. 
and it doesn't really get that hot and I don't have to ramp up the core voltage too far. Now, it seems to hit a wall pretty quickly after the 4.1. I would say 4.15 is where I really got to start upping the core voltage. And I was even able to get her to go at 4.2, but my cooling system can't even handle it. And I got a pretty good cooling system, as you guys see. But when I hit 4.2, um, it's just it's incredible how quickly you got to that scale is from your core voltage in order to achieve the clock speed that you want. I ended up to achieve 4.2 and actually finish the benchmarks. Um, I had to go all the way up to a core voltage of 1.65, which is pretty high for the Threadripper. When I started getting up there, I was getting a little worried punching in those higher numbers, whether or not I'd you know, end up doing something to the processor, but it seemed to be all right. I definitely didn't keep it there and I backed her back down. However, backing her back down to 4.1, it was, it's been great. Even under full load, she'll hit 43C and probably, and, but at the 4.1 overclock, it's got no problem handling that cooling at the 1.435, I think it is. We'll have to check the BIOS. Um, overclock, the cooling system handles it no problem. In fact, it doesn't even struggle at all. Um, under full load and just sits there. It'll, uh, it'll ramp up to 43 degrees C and sit around 43 C. And it doesn't really, it might jump up a little bit, then it comes back down. So even with this extreme overclock, it seems to, you know, handle the cooling no problem. So I think that it's capable that smaller coolers, maybe even a good air cooler, could handle this 4.1 overclock on this system. But, you know, without having a smaller cooler, which it would be kind of cool experiment, having like an air cooler or something like that to see if this 4.1 gigahertz overclock still works as well. So maybe one of these days I'll get an air cooler to throw on it and see what happens. If you guys get this stuff dialed in, I would love to hear your guys' temperatures on the cooling. If you ain't got the custom water or if you're on air, I'd like to hear if this overclock works for you guys without hitting thermal throttling. So please let me know in the comments below. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button for me. And I will see you guys next time.